Hey guys, what's up? Bisectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with a bonus video, two in one day, have to show the LT Marshall's Nations War, uh, four Town Hall 11, three stars for LT, all four Town Hall 11s taken care of, but really not um, all the 10s, left quite a few 10s up, and they still lost the war despite all those 11 triples. Right here, a Town Hall 10 base was left up unhit on each side, I believe, to balance things out. There must have been a mistake in the matching. One TH11 triple for Marshall's Nation, but the difference in the Town Hall 10 triples got them the war there, uh, got the close win because LT struggled with the Town Hall 10s, despite all four of these bases being three-starred. We're gonna take a look at just a few of them. Can't show every base because I don't wanna spoil all the bases for LT. Um, that would suck to have all four Town Hall 11 bases exposed. So just gonna look at two attacks today. Um, but yeah, it's really crazy and it makes us kind of rethink what Town Hall 11 could be. Now, none of these are fresh hits, just so you know. And it was an interesting strategy for LT to focus their Town Hall 11 attacks at the opposing Town Hall 11s. The problem was there was so many less resources going 10v10. I don't think until 10v10 becomes a little more mainstream in terms of us seeing three, four, five, 10v10s um, consistently in CWL. Only then, I think, will this be a mainstream thing to do because right now, um, even if Town Hall 11 three stars are viable, they're not as viable as three starring a Town Hall 10 and it's still not gonna be a worthwhile venture to try to three-star the Town Hall 11s when there's still Town Hall 10s that haven't been tripled. So this is basically the strategy that's getting it done, some kind of mass La Loon. We're actually not even seeing many kill squads. Um, occasionally we see a bowler kill squad, um, but you can also just see the mass La Loon like this. Both are popular, and this one actually used the back-end heroes. So sometimes like this, just sending in the balloons, the hounds first, and letting the heroes clean up what's left. But as you can see, there's really not much left. Um, crazy attack. Right here, the CC actually gets triggered, I think, uh, once his heroes step up a little farther. So actually has to deal with the, uh, the CC troops as they come out, but, um, <laughs> and some of those skelly traps and probably some giant bombs. Um, they're getting all that ground stuff as they walk into the base. Kind of a weird... Uh, end game here but despite that um, no problem the heroes get the job done along with a few remaining air troops so nice attack there we'll take a look at number two then call it a day because that's all i can show unfortunately but um pretty similar stuff here uh i think there was one bowler uh, kill squad type attack all of them are going to be somewhat laloon based some more so than others but this one's another mass laloon you can see common to bring usually a heal sometimes a freeze, sometimes a clone, some kind of combination of spells, but we're seeing pretty much every spell being used, besides, of course, like the lightning and stuff like that. But all the main spells you use for La Lune are in play for these Town Hall 11 attacks. So nice to see the diversity in spells there. <clears throat> um, but this one is uh, Spartan. I think they had two Town Hall 11s that focused on the triples because each of them had a six-star war in, ten, in 11 v 11, three stars, which is pretty incredible. Um, so hats off to them, but maybe not the best strategy as you guys saw. Um, so he's gonna come in with the heroes at the beginning this time, just bite off a very, very small chunk of the base, get the queen pretty much and just a few defenses, no air defenses, no inferno tower, no eagle, but despite that, he's pretty much just gonna walk his way through the base, or I guess drift his way through the base with all these balloons, the haste, just all that good stuff. The warden sitting back and uh, he'll pop the tomb at just the right time as the balloons get close here. Sometimes the warden can hang back too far because only the balloons in his radius get the eternal tomb. So sometimes it can kind of be tricky if the warden's too far away from the balloons, especially if they're like hasted through. But right here, you can see he doesn't even have to use the warden's ability. Could have swagged it. He will use it right here, but could have swagged the warden's ability. That's pretty crazy to think about. Um, but he goes ahead and pops it just for the sake of security. Awesome attack. And that's pretty much it, guys. Hope you liked the video. It's really changing how we're thinking about Town Hall 11. When we see these bases, you know, they're not only anti-2, they have all four air defenses on one side. They're trying to defend the three-star, at least to some extent, but they're very easy to walk over if you have the right plan, and you can get some very um, easy three-stars, or I guess it looks easy, still hard to do. But um, it's definitely a, a, an option, but maybe not the best option until the Town Hall 10 v Town Hall 10 triples become more realistic. But there it is. Um, we'll go over here, you can see, took three attacks on the first two bases, 
and two attacks on the uh, three and four bases. So not fresh hits by any means, but um, it's the strategy LT chose. Genesis is actually going up against them next weekend, so it should be interesting how that works out. We'll see what strategy they use. But thanks for watching the video. Hope you liked it, and I'll be back tomorrow with another one for you guys. See you then. Bisectatron out.